Hello, welcome to VMC, I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to cover information surrounding declawing for cats. Um, it's legal to do where I practice and so it wasn't on my mind to do earlier, but I've been reminded that in the US this is still legal everywhere but New York, so join me, you'll learn something. First of all, what is declawing? Well, the technical term for it is onychectomy. What this means is that we are doing an amputation of the third phalanx. So that means that the tip of the bone in the cat's paw, so from the first knuckle, from the human, it would be this part of the finger, is being amputated on all of the digits. A lot of people aren't aware of how major of an amputation this is and they don't understand what the procedure actually involves. It's also important that we understand that scratching is a very normal part of feline behavior. They use scratching to stretch, to build up muscles in their front limbs, to take off old nail sheathing from the nail. They also use it as a marking and communication tool, both visually but also the paws of the cat will put out some scents from glands and so cats will use their scratching to communicate. So as one of the five freedoms for animal welfare, the opportunity and ability to perform normal species specific behaviors without pain and fear uh, are part of those freedoms and so removing the ability to do this for the cat is not appropriate. On this channel, as you may already know, we often look to what the experts in the field are saying and we also look to what research is telling us about any and all subjects. So when we consider feline practitioners as well as AHA, all of them are strongly opposing declawing because this ends up being a procedure that very severely damages cats and it also doesn't benefit the cat or the cat-human bond in any way. And so we will discuss this more in depth next. There are many risks to doing onychectomies or declaw procedures. Of course, there are all of the anesthetic risks, but this procedure causes immense pain. An amputation of all of the ends of their feet is going to cause significant pain, not only in the short term as they try to heal from this surgery, but also long term. Because research shows us that these cats need to learn how to walk again because they're no longer able to weight bear properly. And this change in how they walk actually causes chronic back pain as well. And we also worry about nerve damage and chronic nerve pain for these cats. They also tend to get horrific chronic foot pain as they age. Um, so acute and chronic severe pain is caused. It also increases the likelihood that they will do over grooming behaviors. It also increases their risks of house soiling, both because using a litter box is too painful for their feet and for their bodies, but also because if you remove their ability to scent mark with their feet, then some cats will start urine marking instead. Declawing also increases bite risks from cats, which is an incredibly serious thing because cat mouths contain bacteria types that cause a lot of harm to humans and any and all cat bites are very serious injuries that can quickly go horrifically bad. 
And so preventing cat bites is a very, very, very important public health concern. When you remove a cat's claws, then it no longer has that protective ability and resorts to biting instead whenever it feels backed into a corner. Another thing that advocates of declawing cats will try to say is that if you ban declawing, then more cats will be surrendered and euthanized because of this ban. And there's actually a research study from British Columbia, Canada that was published quite recently because BC banned declawing in 2018. And so the BC SPCA took data from the three years before and after that ban and compared a bunch of statistics for about 75,000 cats that they interacted with over that six year time period. There was zero difference in the surrender rate of cats after the declaw ban went into effect. And actually, the waiting time that cats spent in the shelter looking for homes decreased. Now this is likely because there are fewer behavioral issues when cats are not declawed, and that is more likely to keep them in the home. It's also important that education occurs to help people understand why cat scratching is such a very normal part of their behavior and how to help cats fulfill that need that they have to mark and scratch things. When you're looking to meet cat scratching needs, it's very important that you offer enough scratching locations. Most people don't have near enough in their homes and they also often don't have tall enough or proper substrates for their scratching posts. I cover this a lot more in the feline enrichment video. I'll link it for us here. It's important to make sure that you have substrates your cat enjoys scratching and if they're vertical in orientation and that's what your cat likes best then they need to be at least three feet tall so that when your cat stands on their back legs and stretches that they have scratching space to use if the posts aren't meeting their needs and a lot of the posts available commercially don't then you're not going to have a cat that's using them. So making sure you have enough scratching locations and the appropriate orientation and substrate for those scratching posts is step number one. It's also important we remember that often after a cat wakes up from a nap, one of the things they like to do next is stretch and scratch a little bit. So the location of the scratching resources matters and having them near places where your cat rests a lot is a good idea. It's also a good idea to put it near the other items your cat has currently been using to scratch. So if your cat is currently using furniture, you're going to have to put scratching posts right beside your furniture, at least while you're working to train your cat to use the post instead of your furniture. Comment below if you want me to make a video about how to teach a cat to use their scratching posts. If there's enough interest, I'll definitely do that. It's also important that we give our cats enough enrichment, and that is also covered in the enrichment video I mentioned earlier. You can also trim their nails frequently, and while you're working on this training of a new behavior, you can consider those nail caps. They will stay on uh, for a few weeks at a time and that can give you enough time to teach your cat where you're looking to have them scratch. I wouldn't use the nail caps long term. The glue can sometimes um, affect the claw of the cat and they can be a bit finicky and a bit of a pain, but for a short term solution, I think they can be very helpful. Many, many, many countries have banned feline declaws for years and years and years. The list goes on and on and on. The fact that only New York in the US has banned declaws is atrocious. Uh, the U.S. needs to really catch up here because this is a welfare issue for cats. They need to scratch and they need to keep their claws. I want to acknowledge that I know some people will already have declawed cats in their household. This video is not judgment on you. If you didn't have this information before, you didn't know, I simply want you to learn this information so that you do not declaw future cats and so that you can learn what you need to know to really manage any of the fallout that will affect 
a current cat you have in your household that is declawed. Managing their chronic pain is going to be very necessary um, and so you will need to be working closely with a feline friendly veterinarian to make sure you're addressing that. I have a video on feline pain and how that presents as it's very different from other animal species and is often quite subtle. So check out that link in the description. Now there will be rare medical situations where amputation of a digit may be necessary. This could be because of trauma to part of the foot or because of a fungal infection in a nail bed that's spread into the bone or sometimes we also will get tumors in the feet that require toe amputations to treat. Now, of course, this is an entirely different situation and I fully support when it's medically necessary for the animal, we may end up having to remove a toe, you know, here and there. What's not appropriate is declawing cats because the humans perceive it to be a convenience thing for them. If you are not willing to accept that part of cat behavior is scratching, then you should not have a cat in your household. I look forward to the day where declaws are banned everywhere and that humans have learned to offer the appropriate scratching enrichment that their felines need so that we can live in better harmony with our cats and have better relationships with them. Please comment if you would like a video on how to train a cat to use a scratching pose. And also don't hesitate to comment if you have another video topic that you would like me to cover. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for joining me today. I hope to see you next Friday as I post a new video most Fridays. Take care. Bye.